Hey there YouTube, it's an unboxing chair video, three months in the making. So what's this one you might ask? Well, this is a chair that I wanted for quite some time and it was a bit of a gamble. I ordered this chair from a website called stin.com, S-T-I-N.com. Never really heard about them, did a Google search and they seem legit. They offer lots of replica chairs from all of the kind of classic designs you see all over the, all over the place. Um, and this particular chair is something I've wanted for quite some time. So I ordered it literally almost three months to the day ago. And of course, because things were backed up from COVID, it took a long time to get here. The box looks like it's probably seen some stuff. It came on a ship from China, uh, literally a boat to ship it here. And it took three months. So long story short, this is going to be a fun unboxing of a brand new chair. So hang with me. All right, so pardon me if you hear the noise in the background, that's the uh, Roombas and the vacuums kind of doing their thing. I didn't want to pause it because, you know, I've got other things to do besides making videos today. This is literally how it came. So I see it wrapped in foam. Let's see how this unboxing does. Right away, I can see that it's the correct color, which is nice. Pull out this uh, single piece of foam. And then what I'm going to do is take this out of the box in just a moment and that way we can focus more on unwrapping it. But as you can see, they packed and padded the corners, packed the, uh, the edges where there would be contact. This corner, interestingly, doesn't have any packing or padding protection, which is kind of strange. Um, so disappointed in that. But let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Okay, so we're back and the box is gone. And interestingly, the corner that was not protected, this corner over here, uh, in the bottom of the box, I did find it was protected at one point. So um, in fairness, um, it was protected somehow, probably like that, but popped off. I'm not sure, it must have been, you know, over the plastic or something, because it was, well, maybe not. It was down at the bottom of the box uh, in the corner, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, they tried. It just didn't stay on, so uh, I guess I'll give them credit for having tried to pack it safely. It does seem to mostly be here in one piece, um, but let's go ahead and undo it. For those of you who know about chairs, you can probably already tell this is a replica of a design from 1945 from someone named Finn Jewell. So let's go ahead and get the plastic off. And like that, through the magic of television, it is now unwrapped. So let's take a closer look. It's gray fabric and a wool blend as I ordered it. I can see they did a really nice job stitching the corners, the seams, at least here from the front. All the stitching seems straight. I don't see any loose threads. It's finished in a walnut. I would say the wood looks very dry, strangely enough, like it hasn't been oiled in a long time or maybe ever. And of course being cooped up on a, a ship at sea probably didn't help that at all. So I might give it a little bit of oil just to refresh the wood. That's the famous kind of swooped arm design. Now clearly this piece isn't a single piece of wood. You can see where the grain pattern changes. So it was you know, a laminated piece that was carved um, probably to save money. I mean, almost assuredly to save money. Over here, I see a couple of little blemishes or defects, um, which probably wouldn't come on a, you know, uh, a grade A actual fin jewel chair, which I believe is still being produced by House of Fin Jewel today. But these chairs routinely sell for somewhere between $1,200 and $2,000. Or if you have an original one from $45, you're looking at $10 or $20 or $30,000. So in my grand scheme of, you know, good style, good design for less money, I took a gamble on this, this company uh, that I never heard, heard of before. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a review. But let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the details. Again, here's the stitching and the seams. All very straight and tidy. I'm trying to sort of check out the, uh, the joinery. Um, probably can't see because of terrible backlighting, but it's not the greatest joinery. I would say that's decent. 
uh, definitely acceptable, but could have been, you know, the transitions could have been sanded smoother. Under here, you know, place people cut corners are usually underneath. Um, it seems to be really nicely finished off. No tears, no issues. Again, where the joinery happens and the glue, they didn't really sand it really well. I think they just saved time on those steps, but again, how many people are going to be on the floor looking up at your chair? Probably not a lot. Here you can see the Velcro, the zipper for um, changing the seat pad. Interestingly, I think the zipper is missing the, uh, the pole, but that's okay. You can still operate it. I'll try it a little later and see if the, um, the mechanism moves, uh, you know, moves smoothly, etc. The fabric feel is wonderful. The cushion is soft, but firm, kind of like a memory foam. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off the rest of the foam protectors. And I might sit in it to give you a first impression of what it's like. All right. Well, it's been uncapped. And again, I haven't cleaned it or polished it or anything. That's exactly as it comes unwrapped. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Again, I gave it another good look over. Uh, one of the downsides is, again, there's some spots where the joinery, you know, not the perfect sanding job, you know, in terms of finishing, but honestly, not bad at all. I think with a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of oiling or just some, um, you know, some wax and feed kind of product to re-oil and put some moisture back in the wood, this will be looking pretty good. Overall, I think it's a very stylish chair and, uh, it looks like it's pretty comfortable, so I'm going to check that out and report back on what I think about that. For scope and scale, I moved it over here next to an original uh, Roy Hill Brasilia bar car. So, uh, yeah. Okay, after that brief interlude of sitting for about 10 minutes, uh, I'm sort of imagining how this would like to be reviewed if I had never sat in one before, because honestly, I've never sat in a real one of these. Uh, here's my review. I'm going to preface it with my dimensions. I'm about six foot tall, um, just about 1.85, um, 185 centimeters, I think, for those who speak metric, give or take. Anyway, I weigh about 215 pounds. I'd say I'm pretty average build for an American. Um, definitely not, you know, morbidly obese, definitely not real thin. Um, heavy enough that if this was a flimsy chair, I would know it when I sat in it. There was no creaks, no squeaks, no straining of the wood. By the way, the chair is very heavy, and I can't estimate off the top of my head how heavy I would say it is, but it is definitely a beefy piece of construction in terms of weight. Uh, the bottom pad is forgiving, uh, but firm, if that makes sense. So you do get a little squish, but it is a relatively firm seat on the pad. Uh, the back is what I would consider very firm, uh, which is kind of nice, actually, and the shape of it uh, actually hugs your back pretty well. It's hard to see, you know, but through here it is dished out uh, quite a bit which does you know, conform to at least the shape of my back quite well. As far as the height, uh, the back rest actually comes up to just, you know, I would say at the middle of my shoulder blades, so below my shoulders, but, uh, but enough to support when you lean back and feel comfortable. And I actually found the arm curve very comfortable. My elbows basically sit right in those pockets and your arms fall kind of naturally um, along the swoop of the arm. So I would say so far for an accent chair that's not meant to be sat in, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Pretty good option. Uh, anyway, in case you're wondering, the punchline for all this, if you're into the chair, I think I paid something like $600 for this shipped to my door. Again, it took three months, a lot of patience, and a lot of nerve wracking. I did exchange several emails uh, with someone from the company about the delay, because after 30 days when they hadn't charged my card, because it hadn't been uh, produced in the factory, I got a little nervous that some sort of scam might be going on. They communicated very well, just saying that it was, you know, a delay in shipping of materials that, that prolonged it and communicated back and uh, effectively they let me know every single step from that point on anytime something happened when it was made in the factory when it was first you know when it set sail out of the port in china when it arrived off the coast of i think los angeles when it came in through the port or wherever and then when it got to their factory uh, warehouse distribution center in new jersey and then when it was shipped here i got notifications all along the way super communicative uh, once I reached out for the entire process and I couldn't say enough nice things. So all in all, I think I would recommend stin.com, not affiliated in any way, shape or form. They didn't pay me for this. Uh, I just wanted this chair. I fell in love with one of these that was in Falling Water, um, the Edward, Kauf Edward Kaufman House, famous by Frank Lloyd Wright in, um, in Bear Run, Pennsylvania. I happened to take a tour and saw this beautiful chair. 
And uh, this is fairly close to what was actually in, I think it's Edward Kaufman Jr.'s study or bedroom. So if you're interested to see the real chair, you can also go to the um, Falling Water website and look through their uh, archive of, or their collection, as they call it, the artworks and pieces. And of course, that's an original Finn Jewel piece from 1945, uh, you know, shortly after the house was built. So it does make some sense. And since Edward Kaufman ran a department store, it's obvious he probably got a promo piece or, or something, or maybe just like the chair. I don't know. He's fabulously wealthy. I guess he could afford anything he wants. But long story short, if, if you're thinking about this kind of style chair and you want to save a bunch of money and can accept the small, you know, manufacturing flaws that I've pointed out here, and I do mean small, I think the most annoying one I see is these two little divots or necks right there, which, you know, are really not bad. Um, up here, again, you can kind of see, pardon the shaky cam, but the little bit of issue where they should have sanded better with the glue. But I'm telling you, I'm overall pleased and it does feel sturdy and strong. I'm very pleased with the purchase and I probably will try another chair from this website again. If you made it this long, thank you for your patience and uh, leave a comment below if you think this was a good purchase or if you think it's a nice design or if you hate the design, you know, or if there's another chair you'd like to see reviewed. I do have a couple things in mind, thinking about an office chair review coming up pretty soon for all those folks that are, you know, working from home and need a review of an affordable, you know, office chair option that's been around. It's really well known. And uh, maybe some other side chairs and accent stuff coming up in the future. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Thanks. And if you haven't subscribed already, think about maybe hitting the subscribe button. Maybe tell your friends if they're into this kind of stuff. And I appreciate it. Every view helps. We're growing this community. I love the comments. And I will catch you all soon. Stay safe.